today. Instructor? Good morning, Instructor. Morning, everyone! <laughs> anyway, I'll have you know I've got a good reason for being late today. And that reason is... We're going to be welcoming a new classmate today. Cool. New classmate? W what? Transfer student at this time of year? S seriously? All right. Come on in. Right now. It's a dude? Oh, hey. It's that guy. Huh? Crow? Crow. But isn't he a second year student? I'm Crow Armbrust. Starting today, I'll be joining you fine folks as a member of class 7. Cool. I like Crow. <laughs> it's gonna be pretty sweet, guys. Hell yeah, Crow. What? What? I mean, how? Are you sure you want to know? It's a long tale fraught with the intrigue of school politics. I don't think I'd put it quite like that. Back in his first year, he slacked off so much that he ended up failing a few of his classes. Then he came crying to me in a panic, like, Oh, oh me, Instructor Sarah, they're not gonna let me graduate. <laughs> so, as a special exception, he's going to be joining us for the next three months to pay for his laziness. You can't be serious. That's an even more pathetic reason than I was bracing myself for. You already know that Crow was one of the trial users for the Arcus test they ran last year. So I thought he might be a good role model for you. In that sense, anyway. And don't forget, he'll also be joining us on our future field studies, too. Nice. Looks like you saved me the trouble of having to explain it all. Anyway, let's let the good times roll. Oh, and since we're all classmates now, no need for all that sweet talking you lay on the other second years, all right? Right. Easier said than done, I fear. If he was any more laid back, he'd be comatose. <laughs> I welcome Crow. He's a Instructor, cool dude. I can't help but notice you left the door open. Wait, is there someone else too? Huh? Are you serious? Two new students? Oh, I was hoping to catch you off guard. <laughs> All right, come on in and say hello. I thought you forgot. Oh, I know that voice. What? <laughs> it's the little chick, the little girl that was with the flying thing. What? What? You must be joking. Her, yeah. <laughs> hey, aren't you? You're the girl we met in the Nord Highlands. Yuppers! Long time no see, guys. But I see a couple of you I don't know. So, guess I better introduce myself. I'm Milliam. Milliam Orion. Milliam. And this here is Eric Gatlam. But we'll just call him Lammy for short. <laughs> He's like, I'm special. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> Holy crap! It's that thing we saw at Ark's Fort. So, this is that strange girl you met in the Nord Highlands. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and a little house rule before anything gets blown up. No bringing that thing out in the classroom. If he accidentally smashes a wall or blasts through the ceiling, I'm the one who's going to get chewed out for it. Boo! Fine. <laughs> anyway. Oh. Nice to meet you guys. <laughs> That's cute. Two new students. 
Tell me you're kidding, please. I really wish I could. <laughs> well, I can see we're in for some fun times these next three months. Three days went by. At first, no one was sure what to make of Crow Ambrust and Intelligence Division Agent Million, Milliam Orion's sudden transfer. But within a matter of days, it's al it almost felt like they'd been there all along. I'm sure none of you need to be reminded that it was none other than Emperor Dracos who ended the War of the Lions. But did you know that historical records tell us he had amazingly few soldiers under his command? Initially, his allies numbered only a few confident and confidants and several warriors from Nord. And while supporters rallied to him in each region, his rank still couldn't com hope to compare to the other prince's armies. Nonetheless, they continued to advance, liberating region after region. And after half a year of bloody battles, Prince Dreykels met perhaps his most well-known supporter. Milliam, right? Would you happen to know the historical figure to whom I'm referring? Sure do. Leanne Sandlot, also known as the Lance Maiden. Oh, right, you are. Well done. Sandlot was the daughter of a count who ruled over a remote region, and accounts tell us she showed great martial skills from a young age. In particular, her skill with the Lance was unparalleled. No record exists of her ever being bested. The Lance Mason Maiden also had a group of mighty warriors under her command who fought alongside her. Perhaps you'd like to illuminate us as to the name of this famous Bannerine? Wasn't it the Gross Ritter? I, I feel like it was the Gross Ritter. I'm gonna see if I can double check though, real quick. I do feel like it was the Gross Ritter though. Might be the Eisenritter. The Eisenritter, also known as the Iron Knights. They were a band of knights said to be able to charge across the battlefield like lightning, cutting down all of their p all in their path. Correct, you've done your homework. After recognizing each other as reliable and trustworthy, they pledged to fight together under a united banner. With the Lance Maiden and her knights bolstering his ranks, Dreykel's army swept through one region after another. In just a year, he was able to defeat the other princes and free the imperial capital Heimdaller. As an interesting footnote, the castle the Eisenritter used as their base of operations 250 years ago. It just so happens to be only a hop, skip, and a jump away from Laura's home in the Grim. Indeed, it's known as Logren Castle. It's a beautiful old building situated on the shore of Lake Abel, to the west of the Grim. Oh, you've mentioned that before. Does anyone live there now? No, due to the dangerous terrain. No one goes near it. It exists simply as a relic of a bygone age. 
The Arcite family is responsible for the care and maintenance of the castle, though really only minimal work is done. Speaking of the Arcide, wasn't one of your ancestors the Eisenreiter's second in command? Indeed, the Lance Maiden's most trusted assistant and confidant, from what I understand. The Sandlot family line ended with the death of the Lance Maiden. And it's partly because of that that the Arcid family mourns her death each year. I see. Oh, what a fascinating story. The Graham, huh? Never had a mission there, so I've never been able to go. Maybe I should have stopped by when I went to Bearheart a while back. You think she'd at least get sent all over the country on secret missions? I know. She totally, she totally just let it slip that she was doing something in Bearheart too. I suppose it's better than her being all distant and cagey around us. Okay, so tomorrow's a free day, which means that next Wednesday you'll have your usual practical exam. You better all bring your A-game. Oh, Milliam and Crow. A few must, must have instructional materials you guys are going to need. As part of Class 7 finally showed up. I'll hand that stuff off so to want to you once we're done here. Radio, man, what a drag! All right, home rooms out. Marcus, if you you'll do the honors, yes, instructor. All right, bow. So what do you think? Well, I don't think we have to be on our guard around her, at least. Same. Though I'd rather she kept that giant silver thing of hers hidden. I don't think she's a bad girl. I was taking a nap in the courtyard yesterday, and she came and fell asleep next to me. What does that have to do with whether or not she's trustworthy? They look like a couple of kittens all curled up together. <laughs> their personality may be worlds apart, but they're both rather cat-like in their own way. She can't be more than 12 or 13. She's pr still practically a child. Yeah, you're right. She's so chipper all the time that it's hard to really be cold toward her. Yeah. I don't think I could bring myself to spurn her. She's got this natural charm, I think. Be that as it may, her presence here reeks of blood and iron, if you take my meaning. Well, it certainly seems that way. As such, I'm planning on granting you a... I should have it ready for you in a few weeks' time. Ah, uh, Ah, uh, yeah, because she was his, like... She's a part of his group. She's one of his something childs or whatever, right? Whatever it was called. So he probably planted her here. It's hard to believe a girl like that could be an agent of the intelligence division. But just going off what happened in Nord... There's not much that would make me doubt it. And then there's that thing. Air get them. That's always with her. She calls it Lammy, but aside from its name, we don't really know anything about it. 